Hello, everybody. Welcome to Here Comes the Spider Cast <laughs> number eight. This is your co host, Michael, and as always, I'm joined by uh, your other co host, Josh. And today we're going to be looking at February of 1981 in Spider Man comics. Uh, we're going to start off with The Amazing Spider Man 213, then move over to Marvel Team Up 102, and then we're going to finish things off with Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider Man number 51. Right. So uh, I guess we'll just jump right into uh, Amazing, number 213. Um, so this one we see the wizard escaping Rikers Island. Uh, we see him kind of escape with this mystery person. We don't really know who he is, and we don't ever find out uh, who this person is at the end of the comic. It's kind of left a, a mystery. I love how they keep him in shadow the yeah. whole issue. Even when, it, even in broad daylight, he's kept in shadow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they really want to keep that away from the, from the audience. And, and, and without looking to the next issue, have do you have any idea who it is? Because I did not cheat, no, but I have a guess. No, actually, okay. I, I have no idea. I think it's, is it The Stranger or is that stranger. his name? The Stranger okay. or The Walk? I can't remember, but I'm not, I'm not going to cheat though. I'm not going to look ahead, but that's my <laughs> guess. Right. So okay. the plot, let's talk about the plot. Right. So we also see um, Deb in this one kind of trying to get closer to Peter Parker and kind of move that relationship uh, but once again, forward. she's the victim of the asshole Peter Parker. Oh my right? god! Yeah, he's he's such a dick. Yeah, like at the, right at the beginning, we see him being introduced to this new, like, hot, sexy neighbor, oh, and he's I know. like he's like fawning over her, and he hasn't even met her yet. Like there, there's an there's an actual panel where he's like, like quivering. Yep. Like it, it's so awkward and weird. And then right after that, we see Peter take Deb out for like a sweet date and they kiss at the end. And then Peter's like, whoa, where where did this come from? Why is Deb uh, all of a sudden all over me? It's like, what, what's what been happening these past You've few issues? You've been dating issues? her for a week, like whatever months. Yeah. It's like, I just want to read some lines of dialogue, some it's, thought bubbles here. Oh. He's like, and now this is this is where it starts. This is where there's a lot of bad uh, samples, but here's one: a date with Debbie Whitman isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but it beats listening to. And then, oh my golly, and then he sees the girl, and it's like, dude, what? Like completely? Like I'm so like I'm maybe right. there's people listening that are like, hey, everyone's like this, but complete like Peter Parker stringing along a girl like this is just not, so out of character. Yeah. Exactly. So so after he says that, he's talk he he clearly says, I have a date with Deb. And yes. then later on we ha he says, I have a feeling Debbie's gotten the wrong idea. She kissed me like she meant it. And yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> I was just like well, what, what like what do you think's been going on here Peter like what what is exactly. like it's I know oh. it's like what is this is this um you know this is not dating in 2019 this is dating in 1981 this is Peter Parker come on right it's you know like it be I, I one think, what, think if it was like Tony Stark or like some right. sort of like you know player who's right. kind of always has a new lady each issue the, Peter's always had like one girl at a time and it's been like constant right like right. It, he, he's with them for a really long time exactly. and he's not the person to have like multiple girls and like even when he does have like a girl he's interested in it usually ends up bad for him or he'll mess it mess it up or right you know he she thinks he's a little too dweebish dweebish or whatever like it's just so weird that uh, it's totally the character, He's and like this. yeah. And here's the thing: even in, in examples like you've obviously seen uh, the Scott Pilgrim movie, right? Yes. That's a great movie. But um, one of the things about him is, even though he's this nerdy guy, he still is playing. You know, uh, what's her name? Knives, right? Like he's right. cheating on one girl with another. So yes, he's an asshole. But the way that he handles that is still a Scott Pilgrim nerdy kind right. of way like an attitude whereas here peter parker you're right he's just a complete dick right it, it'd be and, and one he has thing no if, remorse right it'd be one thing if he walked out of the hallway and then she started like hitting on him or talking to him and he was like whoa what's going on here right right and, and then it ended there but he was like deliberately like like it's it's like one step away from being the wolf howling and like the, right, uh, the right, eyeballs right. like bulging out like wow right. wow wow like yeah. it's yeah, so right. awkward and out of place especially uh -huh. for peter so 
yeah, I really did not like that. No, and basically, let's be clear. We can only imagine that Denny O'Neill is projecting his own personality on Peter Parker, which, right. you know, when you're writing a character that's been around for decades, you you can't do that. You have to write them the way that they were created, right? Right. So, or or if you're going to change something, there should be a reason for that change. Right. Right. Like th- there's there's really seems to be no rhyme or reason why he's acting like a dick. Like if if he had the the symbiote suit on, that maybe that would explain. Like mm-hmm. if it's changing his personality and manipulating him and like. You know, that could be a good storyline, right? right? Like changing up Peter Parker and Spider-Man for a reason, I think can and has worked before. But here it's just like changing him to change. Like there's there's no reason for any of this to be happening. It just feels so out of place. Absolutely. You're right. Um, I I do want to talk about something that's really good in this issue. Not really good, but it's a really Peter Parker uh, moment that I really like. And that's when Spider-Man comes home and his costume is still uh, covered in brine from two issues ago. Right. And so because of that, he has to wash it in the tub. Like such a Peter Parker thing to do. And he ends up using, like he's he's kind of in his head, he's kind of bragging because he's a science student. Yeah. And, and whatever concoction he ends up using ends up bleaching his costume. I, so for the whole rest of the story, it's all like a like a washed out, yes, bleached out Spider-Man I costume. I absolutely love it. Like I exactly. love the, the look of the Spider-Man even. Like the, that costume just kind of... I don't know. It looks so right. cool. Like it yep. is a mistake and it's kind of a bummer, but it just, I, I, I don't know. I absolutely love that. You give um, Spider-Man kind of a new look for an issue while also making it like a problem for Peter Parker and adding to the, to the fact that he's always kind of down on his luck. I absolutely right. love that. Yep. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So anyway, so uh, basically beyond the uh, subplot, we get this, Sort of ridiculous report. I actually almost missed this because it's a report, and I, you know, I gotta, I, I gotta say, I love superheroes, but my least, absolute, least favorite um, aspect of the superhero genre, okay, is when the supervillain, like, you can, I can accept the costumes and the names and all the tropes, but to me, supervillains still have to have a logical motivation, and like robbing a bank is logical, you know. Yeah. S- you know any kind of thing about stealing or making money or maybe even like whatever it may be it's logical but when they just want to wreak havoc or get revenge i just it just takes me out of it so here we have they've concocted this plot to get the revenge on spider-man and we have a report on the radio reports state that a giant mechanical spider is climbing the south tower of the world trade center and this is all just to get the attention of spider-man which we've seen before uh, it just really takes me out of it. I just think it's ridiculous, you know? And so then Spider-Man has to go and fight this big robot spider, which, uh, I don't know, I, again, irritates me, but I, I can I can go along with it fine. Yeah, um, it, it feels kind of like... It's, it's very gimmicky, the big spider. Like, uh-huh. it, it felt like they had a good idea for a cover, and they're like, yeah, right. let's, let's, you know, let's figure out a way to, to add this giant spider climbing up the World Trade Center. Like Good that's point. that's really f- kind of what it felt like the premise of this whole issue was because he, even when he, st- he when he does face the uh, the giant spider he kind of takes it down in like a few panels right, it, there, right, there's really right. no fight and it's just used as a distraction distraction for their the villain's real plans so yeah. which is even yeah which is kind of strange because what they're doing is. Um, so, but, well, okay, this is the other weird thing is they introduce, they focus on this one character. They introduce him and really focus on him. Then they have the subplot where they're, they're going to have a, um, what's it called? Like a meeting of all the tenants at Peter mm-hmm. Parker's building to, to talk about like a rent strike, which I wish I would have known you could have done years ago because I would have uh, used that <laughs> in some of my past situations. But anyway, so um, I can't remember. How do they know? Do they know it's, no, they don't know it's his building. It's a building next to him, isn't it? Right, so they they track him down. So they use the spider to to distract him. So then they can use this machine that will track his spider sense. Right. So they they right. track him down to the building, and they know that he's in that building because he was there because he was living there before. But then he swung out, and he ended up meeting them on the building next to his because they were waiting for him to show up. Right. So. Yeah, it all kind of felt like a roundabout way of, like, doing things. Yes. Like, I don't know. 
Well, so then they they bring bring back all these. All, everyone is like, apparently they're having, they're having the meeting on the roof, so everyone's up on the roof. The roof is on fire. So now Spider Man's trying to think of a way to rescue them, which is mm-hmm. kind of you know interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he's got to uh, he kind of creates this bridge by ripping off the ladder out of uh, the other roof, and then we focus back to Charlie. There's even like a little little uh, caption that says. Why no Charlie? Remember him? Like, I don't really know that went went through so much trouble of introducing him, but maybe it'll pay off next issue. Right. But then basically there, it just ends on a um, on a cliffhanger, right? Right. Like Spider-Man jumps onto the roof and then it collapses and that's it. Next issue, the wizard triumphant and that's it. Yeah. So. So, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like uh I, this this issue really didn't work for me it had some fun elements i think but uh-huh. as a whole it kind of um didn't really do it for me i think it was a mixture of the writing and the story and kind of um right. not everything coming together i mean the the art from the art by john romita jr is great as always yep um and again, it was uh, inked by Jim Mooney. So I, I think that mm-hmm. the art, especially at the beginning when when they're escaping Riker Island or Riker yes. Prison and, and the rain and like the, that yep. atmosphere that both uh, both of the artists like created with both the, the, the line work and like the inking and the shadows is just fantastic uh, at the start of this issue. So I don't have any problems there. Everything kind of stems from this weird peter parker that they're writing right just exactly. doesn't seem to i don't know work for me not at all so other than the bleaching his costume in the bathtub there's really nothing to recommend about this issue right yeah all right well that wraps up that issue that brings us to the next yeah. one which is marvel team up number 102 with spider-man and doc samson okay right. so before we get into this issue uh are you familiar with doc samson i'm actually not Okay, I've I've definitely seen him, and I've um like I think I've briefly read a bio of him once, like skimming through a book, but I don't think I've ever really read much with him in it. Well, I'm mostly familiar with him from Peter David's run on Spider Man, and I was never a huge fan, but um I don't know. I, I guess I, one reason I don't like him, I I, I kind of like the idea of other people being exposed to gamma radiation, and you know mm-hmm. instead of having green skin, he's got green hair. I just I've always hated his costume. Like yeah. to me it clashes like it's like you've already got green hair you don't also need to have this... red yellow and blue yeah, yeah it it's, just it's clashes. a lot and it's also by the way another variation on uh captain marvel's like, yeah shazam it really that... does kind of look like that yeah and so anyway um are you familiar so it's, this issue is written by mike w Barr, drawn by frank springer and inked by mike esposito are mm-hmm. you familiar with mike w Barr at all no so I mostly know him from uh, the later issues of Brave and the Bold with Batman, and okay. also he did the the Outsiders. So he did the I think he did the entire Outsiders run. Oh, okay. So I consider him like I've really grown to like him. Like right. in the re- recent years, he's kind of to me like a classic, you know, superhero DC writer. So I really I, I really like his writing. Uh, Frank Springer, a lot of people don't like him. Um, I'm familiar with him from Dazzler. He did a couple issues of uh, Transformers. Depending on the inker, sometimes he could be really good, but I think he's, from what I've seen, he's really good at drawing women, like beautiful mm-hmm. women. Uh, probably why they put him on Dazzler. So maybe not the greatest superhero artist, but definitely a decent artist and a good storyteller, or like, mm-hmm. like everyone at this time. Uh, and so this is kind of, um, it, it's a cool issue because I really I like the way it starts out because we have the, um, the university setting, which I love when they put Spider-Man they ground him into this setting. Right. Like they're having him go to this uh, sort of lecture between, and, it, and it's it's interesting because it's there's two different people speaking. One of them is Doc Sampson's, I guess, former girlfriend, uh, Dahlia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's Dahlia, yeah, I think. I think it's Dahlia. Yeah, and then his nickname for her is Delilah, which is Samson and Delilah are biblical characters, haha, whatever, All okay, right. fine. So yeah, so, so she has this uh, speech about Basically saying that we know sh- we should not be using, uh, re- we should not be researching uh, gamma radiation, and he ha- has like the counter argument. So at least it sort of resembles something that could happen in real life. Yeah. So I like that. I, you know? I also like that when they um, put Peter Parker in situations where he would naturally be there already for these team ups. Yeah. Because a lot of the times they kind of just throw him in. He just so happens to be there. Where this it feels like peter parker should be at this event 
That's like, a good point. Th- this could be a Doc Samson story or a Peter Parker story. Like they kind of go hand in hand in this yep. issue. And I think that this is one of the stronger Marvel team ups that we've had so far. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And it kind of just, you know, supports my theory that Mike W. Barr is a great superhero writer, mm-hmm. you know, because I've always liked his stuff. So yeah, you're right. This is this this has more of a classic Spidey feel than yeah. some of the more recent issues we've read, it, right? It also has like it, like the whole story has a, a very classic feel to it. There's not a lot uh-huh. of parts that are too over the top or corny. Right. Um, right. You kind of have this a, a little bit more of a serious tone. And yeah, I think it really fits for, for the story that they're telling. Right. And so anyway, so Doc Sampson is countering the other speaker's argument by demonstrating his strength, but then something happens and he sort of collapses mm-hmm. and um, Peter Parker his spider sense goes off and so he thinks something is going up going on up in this projection booth. So he goes up into the projection booth and there's a bunch of guys kind of running away up there. And then when he goes up, he, he kind of sees people tied up and other people operating they're operating like this um I don't know what it like is, a spotlight. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so somebody knocks him out, but we don't see who it is. Then he kind of runs away. And by the way, I have to point out his line of dialogue is out of my way insect. That is the Hulk's first line of dialogue in the Hulk number one from 1962. I just have to Oh, really? That. Yeah. I don't know if that was oh, on purpose really or cool. what. Yeah. That's but anyway. Kind of a nice thing. It might, it might have been because the Hulk has, not, I mean, he doesn't play a part in the story, but he's kind of tied in with the, the characters right. and totally. at the beginning. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So anyway, so then so then he starts, you know, comparing notes with Doc Samson. They're trying to figure out what's going on, but and basically they figure out that they had a Someone was shooting a ray projector at him to sort of, was it not aggregate? Um, what's it called like when you agitate? irritate? Agitate his yeah. gamma. I don't know exactly how gamma radiation, radiation works in the Marvel Universe, but apparently yeah. just by radiating someone, it sort of activates their powers and makes them <laughs> overpower or whatever. So anyway. Right. And he so, kind of has like an outburst. Right. And smashes the table. So they were exactly, probably playing yeah. on the fact that too much uh, can mess with your anger. Right. Right. So then so. Spider Man, yeah, he disappears, and right <laughs> as Peter Parker's walking to the room, a little bit ridiculous, but that's a that's fine. We can forgive it. Right. So then Peter Parker follows Doc Sam- Samson to this restaurant to sort of eavesdrop in on their conversation, and then we get some backstory of how they know each other, how they dated, blah blah blah, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and then, <laughs> and then uh, let's see here. So then, of course, uh, yeah. Oh, oh. So then we we're introduced to these two guys who again. I can only assume are supposed to be um, like parodies of people in the Marvel bullpen. I don't right. know. Uh, one guy's named Tony and the other one's named Griff. I don't know okay. if they're supposed to be real people, if they're friends. I have no idea. But anyway, so Doc Sampson has tracked these guys down and he actually lifts up the entire building uh off the ground like 10 feet off the well six feet off the ground which is preposterous but whatever again mike w Barr, a classic superhero writer right so we'll Mm -hmm. forgive it uh and then basically then what happens is it's revealed that the guy that punched out spider-man earlier is the rhino right so i'm sure you're familiar with the rhino right oh yeah okay so then they have a little fight with the rhino and then uh doc Sampson ends up getting captured and uh, wait, what happens here? I kind of lost track. Yeah, of this plot. so he gets captured, and uh, they've got him hooked up to this machine, and right? They're trying right. to like uh, mess with his brain, and uh, Spider-Man ends up tracking him down and cutting the power to the facility to save him. Right. And uh, when he does, there's kind of some loose wires, and they end up uh, electrocuting Talia, or sorry, Dahlia. Right. Dahlia, and. Yeah. Uh, he kind of has this like melodramatic I'll save you moment where he kind of jumps for the wire and takes on a lot of the uh, electrical current, but she still passes out and it kind of ends on this br- like quick uh, sad note with him carrying her off. Right. So Yeah, kind of a sudden ending. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I guess if I can say, I think it's safe to say that the issue started out better than it ended. Yeah. I definitely yeah, like it, the it, setup much better than I like the way it was played out, like the, mm-hmm. you know, like the third act or whatever. It kind of devolves into a typical superhero slugfest 
with kind of a silly, you know, situations and him being captured and all that. It's just kind of mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yeah. But I do like the setup and I like the middle scenes with the, the restaurant and all that. That's all fine. But yeah. This yeah. And great. I, I actually, normally I'm kind of bored by a lot of flashback dialogue when they sure kind of like dis- like over describe everybody's background and backstory right. but even when they were going and talking like uh dahlia was telling her side of the story with doc samson like that i never really got bored with that um i think that there was some pretty good storytelling overall but yeah i, I agree at the end it did kind of just devolve into the slug fest and end briefly Right, like, quickly, yeah. So, yeah. Abruptly, yeah. And the, Abruptly, the other thing, yeah. too, is it's funny because last week when we reviewed the last issue of Marvel Team Up, there was another subplot with Nighthawk and his previous girlfriend. There was a lot of flashback. Yeah. But this one was just done better, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. Marvel Team Up, uh, a decent issue. Definitely a pleasant change in tone from Mike yeah. W. Barr. Um, but, again, it, it didn't end... Gr- you know, didn't end particularly great, but whatever. It's still an okay issue. Mm-hmm. Um, now that brings us to Spectacular Spider-Man, number 51, which is right. wrapping up um, last issue's story. Yeah. So we we have... <laughs> we, have <Yeah. laughs> we have... Uh, we were left off last issue with Peter Parker being abducted by these aliens and brought onto a ship. And when they get on board, we find out that um, Mysterio is behind it. He's been uh, working with these aliens. And that's really what the, the whole cliffhanger. There really wasn't a whole lot going on. So right. we start off this one with um, a brief introduction of, of what happened or like, like what happens next. And then they cut to like – a really long recap i thought like it was a like a page and a, a couple of panels i believe of retelling exactly what happened last yes, issue and it felt yes. kind of wasting uh, space yeah yeah it, it was a lot for for really the the small bit of information that we received from it right um but yeah it's kind of the I, I, this this issue is all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, I agree. It feels like those scenes in Scooby Doo where the gang is being chased by a ghost and they're going in and out of doors and they're kind of appearing yeah. in one door and like coming yeah. out another. That's really what this issue felt like because everybody was all over the place the entire issue. Yeah, we have. Peter Parker dangling in this room, spinning around with a bunch of lights flashing in his eyes, trying to mess with him uh, with mis- mysterious illusions. And then we have mysterious goons going and kidnapping Deb and then Spider-Man gets away and he's fighting Mysterio. And like, I, it, like everything kind of just happens. I couldn't, e- I, I just read this two days ago and I already kind of forget the order of everything that happened. It was well, just, I, yeah, I think messy. there's a couple key, key problems i think one of them is it's sort of the uh it, it's like it's like are we i guess okay it's all about the intent it's like are we supposed to believe that spider-man uh doesn't know that they're aliens or are we supposed to believe that he does know because that's not clear you know what right. I mean? even last month we couldn't between the two of us we didn't really know for sure it's almost like first we have to believe that spider-man believes they're aliens and then when he finds out it's a surprise right it's like a twist right the the only like when we're actually confirmed that he thought they were real aliens is when we found out or when he also finds out that they're not real aliens and he's shocked by it yeah like, when he was shocked like you're not real aliens i'm like oh okay so this whole time we were supposed to believe they were real aliens exactly okay. like i it just felt yeah, everything was all kind of over the place this issue. And all, and also the, the, the fact that Mysterio used Spider-Man as one of his illusions, maybe it was meant to be clever, but again, it just makes it more sloppy to me, more confusing, you know? Yeah. And like unnecessary. Yeah, and like even like this kind of forced backstory with Mysterio being one of the original aliens back right. in one of the past issues in costume. And he took his job too seriously and then became Mysterio, I guess. I, Yeah, it's just... 
No, yeah, it wasn't. It's another, it kind of just makes me, unfortunately, as I'm reading it, I'm just like, damn, I just want to get through this because I know that there's better Roger Stern stuff on the way and I just want to get to that stuff. You know, that's how I feel because I did like the initial run, like the the Belladonna saga, but Mm -hmm. the last three issues by Roger Stern have just not been great. Yeah. In my opinion. So it's, it's, it's really showing that this was kind of the B story. Yeah, it, it, like absolutely. throughout these months, because yeah, it's it's been kind of choppy and rough. Um, we get uh, yeah, we get a little bit of Aunt May being upset, and then Deb talking to Aunt May's fiance before she gets right. captured, and it's kind of dry. Um, even like some of the humor where he where Peter is trying to be like the tough guy and question everybody, it's it feels disjointed and kind of. It doesn't fit the story. I I, I don't know. The, yeah, this one was rough. <laughs> Not great. Well, yeah, you know, and, and, you, and you know, one thing, uh, at least he wasn't a complete dick to uh, Deborah yeah, Whitman. That's true. But <laughs> she did make, she made an interesting uh, comment in her thought bubbles. Right. About. Did you notice that? About Spider-Man, right? Uh, well, the one at I'm the, thinking of is when she says, oh, where is it? She says something like. Uh, kind of always being taken advantage of or always being a victim or something. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, where is it? Of course I can't find it. So, but anyway, it's, it's just kind of sad in a way. It makes you kind of, I don't know. It's like, I feel sorry for her. Like, I don't really know what they were thinking when they created her. Like right. the fact that the fact that like the general public, no one knows who Deborah Whitman is other than people that read Spider-Man in this era. She didn't amount to much. They did bring her back many years later. But when I started reading Spider-Man, I had no idea what she was until I read these issues. Like mm-hmm. it was, it was like, Oh yeah, he had another girlfriend. I completely forgot about that. It's just kind of sad. Yeah. She was treated, I guess, you know? I, and it, I think it's also so weird because usually Peter's girlfriends, like something happens for them to break up or like there's, there's usually something that like Gwen dies, uh, uh-huh. MJ is always kind of forgotten about, and she kind of takes a stand and breaks up with him a lot. And like, right. there, there's always something where she's she's all just like for this whole run, she's just been strung along by Peter. There's never an actual moment where they're having a nice conversation or going on a date or like you never feel that connection between uh-huh. the two of them that you do with all of no. his other girlfriends before something happens. So. This one, it's kind of just telegraphed right away exactly what's going to happen. She's just going to get tired of Peter not giving her attention, uh-huh. and she's going to kind of leave. Like, it's just... Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Well, I guess we'll and, see and how she, it goes. Because she I, also I, doesn't like Spider-Man? No. No, I guess not. Because... Uh, so, like, that could could have also been a fun um, storyline, too. Like, show... Because a lot of the times, they're... Like, when Peter's interested in a girl and she's kind of out of his league, they end up uh-huh. liking Spider-Man and then not being into Peter Parker. So having it opposite in this case, with right, right. Deb kind of being like, uh, Spider-Man's weird. And then wanting to spend time with Peter, that could have been kind of fun to explore. Maybe like sure. he's tr- maybe like make it a story point that he's trying to be like more tough and more, like put on a facade like a Spider-Man character rather than just being himself, being Peter Parker with her. Sure. Because then yeah. that could give her a reason to not like him and end their relationship. And that could also be a reason why he's kind of acting like a dick towards her a little bit throughout these issues. Like, right. But it just, they haven't really explored that and he's just no, kind nothing. of been rude for no reason. So right. Actually, it seems like a missed that... opportunity. Yeah. Unless they explore it in the future, which maybe True. we'll see. But... Yeah. So on digital 14, original 17, on the middle strip on the left, she says, he's, she's talking about Mysterio, and he's hardly aware that I'm here, and I'm just, I'm just a hostage to him, someone to be used and discarded. But then, I don't know why he should treat me any differently than anyone else ever has. Oh. Yeah, it's sad. So I, I don't know what the writers were thinking, but I mean, whatever. I don't know. We'll see how this goes, I guess. Kind yeah. A strange character. Man, I I hope that she her character ends up turning around because there's nothing that she's ever done where I'm like, oh, I don't like Deb. She, right, she's exactly. always been kind of sweet and like, um, whenever she is a part of the story, it's 
pretty enjoyable until Peter Parker comes in and ruins it. Right. So I, I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope nothing bad happens to her. Just because yeah. I hope she, she has the, the you know, resolution and, and ending that she deserves. She, she deserves some justice. Good point. Good point. Yeah. All right. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of this month's reviews. Right. Well, um, actually, before we... Oh, wait uh, a minute. We, we have, have a backup story. We do we? have a backup story. Did you read uh, this week? I did not. Did okay, you? <laughs> I, I did. And it's a good thing I have been reading. Because, okay. Because... Um, so we, we last left off with um, White Tiger being captured by uh, Gideon Mace. And his okay. goons kind of rough him up and beat him up, and he gets away. But as he's um, as he's trying to escape, Gideon Mace actually comes with a machine gun and kills White Tiger. Ooh! And it actually okay. and like the last panel of this issue is Gideon standing over White Tiger, and he's just laying on the ground in a pool of blood. Really? And. It says, next issue, Spider-Man and the final fate of the White Tiger. Don't ah. miss the hero. Don't miss the hero killers. So this uh, backup issue has actually been leading up to a White Tiger and Spider-Man team up. All right. So we All are right. going to finally get it next issue. Good to know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and how was the story? Uh, it was fine. I, like nothing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay. he... Uh, he beats up a couple of goons and then uh, uh-huh. when he's escaping, he sees a window and he runs towards the window and like a Looney Tune cartoon, he gets up to it and he goes, Drats, somebody painted this on the wall. And he turns around and Gideon May says, yep, I put that there t- as a trap. And then he, gun- oh boy. he guns him down with a machine gun. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I should read it. You're saying. Uh, you know what? I think I enjoyed it better than the rest of this issue. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. But, well, let's hope things uh, pick up next month, right? Yeah, I hope so. So, uh, we again, we'd love to hear uh, everyone's comments. We'd love to hear your feedback. Please let us know what you thought of these comics that we reviewed. Please, please let us know what you thought of our reviews. And also, we have some very good news. We will soon be on Spotify. Awesome. So if that is how you listen to uh, podcasts, yeah, we'll be on there soon. So yeah, um, until uh, next week, uh, that wraps it up for Michael. You got anything else to say, Josh? Yeah, the uh, last thing I'll say is just make sure you follow us at uh, Comic Syndicate on Twitter. Uh, we want to hear from you guys, so tweet at us what you think about the episodes and the issues that we're talking about or if you have anything to say about what we're going to be talking about next week maybe we'll chat about your questions and and uh you know comments on the episode so yeah you got it all right so until next monday this is here comes the spider cast see you next time see ya.